Hello everybody, this is Havoc back with another collaboration with Paradox Interactive on a tutorial for Crusader Kings 3. Today's tutorial will focus on understanding and managing your domains, or the lands you own within your own realm. We'll take a look at factors such as domain limit, development, control, and a few others that you'll need to be thinking about as you expand. Let's dive in. Land Organization To better understand your domains, you need to understand their organization, and it's pretty simple to grasp. Your holdings come in two different forms in CK3, counties and baronies. Counties consist of anywhere between two to six baronies. Baronies are where your buildings are constructed and we will cover later in the video, but it is at the county level where three of your more important constant values lie, development, control, and popular opinion. Development. Development is a measure of the advancement in infrastructure present in a county, which is found on the right hand side of the county overview. The level of development directly influences an increased percentage of levies, taxes, and the supply limit of said county. Development growth is slow and designed to span across the entire duration of the game, reaching a potential maximum of 100. As your county's development increases, it will slowly spread outwards, affecting the counties around it. Using this idea, there are some ways to maximize this system. First, you can use your steward's increased development counselor task. Although this is a very slow process and your steward could honestly be better used elsewhere. Counties with farmland and floodplains make ideal candidates for development, so focusing your efforts in those areas could yield potential centers for future generations, which would then spread to counties around it that are ideally in your empire, creating a long-term domino effect for development. Control Control is the direct amount of power you hold over a county. Anything under 100 will see a reduced percentage in the amount of levies and taxes that a county contributes to you. A low amount of control may lead to county corruption, further causing a decrease in money and levies provided. During war, forcibly seizing territory will naturally see a decreased amount of control, and it's wise at times to consider a more peaceful means of acquiring territory, through vassalization for instance. It is of course possible to increase control in any county, the best way of which is to use your marshal's increased control counselor task, though depending on the amount of control, it could take quite a while to get back up to 100. Popular Opinion This last county level value is equally as important as the first two, perhaps even more so, simply because of how you can handle it in your empire. Popular Opinion is a measure from negative 100 to 100 of how the county's populace feels towards the character that holds their county. Do note that this may not be you, especially as you grow. Should the population become unhappy for long enough, they will be able to start or join a peasant or populist faction, which can easily spread quickly throughout the entire realm. This effect could ruin smaller empires if not kept in check. The easiest way to control popular opinion is by ensuring the county holder is of the same culture and faith as the population. Although other factors from your county holder's characteristics may have a popular or negative influence on popular opinion regardless. Baronies and Buildings Now onto the smallest form of your land ownership's baronies. As mentioned earlier, each county is made up of a certain number of these, and each barony may or may not already have a building constructed in them. The three core types of holdings remain true from Crusader Kings 2. Castles, cities, and temples. Castles provide levies and fortifications, cities give taxes and a focus on development, and temples provide taxes and a focus on control. Knowing this, you can think ahead to develop certain counties, build several cities to create a development hub, lots of castles and a choke point to slow down future enemies, or even several temples in an area that might be a constant hotspot for low control issues. As for the buildings themselves, it really depends on the terrain of the county. These regular buildings primarily focus on increasing levies and taxes, but several have a secondary effect that ranges from things like increased damage to certain military units or even straight development growth increases. New to CK3 is the idea of a duchy capital building. These buildings can only be built in the capital of any de jure duchy, which limits their availability across the map. In order to actually build these, you will need to personally own the duchy title. And since you can only own two duchies without penalties, this limits a player's desire to hoard counties just to build these buildings. Duchy buildings are completely unique, providing much more intense benefits than the regular buildings themselves. 
To see the long-term effects of any building chain in your baronies, simply click on the preview button and check out the different stages of upgrades, their costs, and time to construct. This is immensely helpful in figuring out a strategy that will lay the foundations for future rulers of your empire. Domain Limit Bringing up duchy buildings and their limited availability requires a more basic understanding of how many lands you can personally own. This domain limit determines how many holdings you as a character can hold without penalties to income and vassal opinion. A holding can be on the barony level or on the county capital level, giving you a little bit of flexibility on just what you want to own and what you might want to pass off to another family member or a vassal. Your domain limit is affected by a multitude of things, but most dominantly are personal stewardship skill, your succession laws, and the tier of your primary title. This combination means it is possible to hold several counties in your own name before the penalties kick in, and it's also worth focusing more on the stewardship skill tree as you climb the ranks if you want to hold more land. That's all for this tutorial on domains in Crusader Kings 3. Tune in next time as I will take a look at handling money in the game. Be sure to check out and subscribe to Paradox Interactive's YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching, this is Havoc again, and I will see you all in the next video.